Good morning. This is Alfriston. This is the final day. I'm perched here on the side of this busy rural road. It's 7.30 a.m. Just want to show you the campsite because it's quite tricky to find. There's a little sign there, but it's like a TARDIS. You walk about 400 meters up there, up this private driveway, and it's a massive campsite. Really nice, informal, plenty of space, really nice um, toilets, showers. Best of all, 10 quid. Cheaper so far. <laughs> okay. Just try and find now the final section. It's a bit out of the way, but we'll find it. Beachy Head, Seven Sisters. Over there is where the campsite was, but this place here, I think it's called Dean's Place, don't allow you to walk through their car park to get back onto the way. So I've had to walk the long way around. <laughs> There's a notice up there saying no access for walkers. That's all right. At least I've got a few more precious bovine interactions, even though they're, it's too early in the morning for them. They're, they're busy munching away over there. <laughs> We're on the final approach now towards the Seven Sisters and Beachy Head. Looky what we have over here. <laughs> the famous white horse carved into the chalky downs over there. So now the bridle way gives way purely for walkers now. All the other signs have disappeared. No carriages, no horses, no mountain bikes. Walk on. This is Cuck near Mendes. Well within touching distance of the sea now. You can smell it. I'm at Haven Brow. Start the Seven Sisters, which are over there. Those seven sisters are not as famous as the White Cliffs of Dover, but because of the constant erosion, they are brighter and whiter than the White Cliffs of Dover. <laughs> Out there is the English Channel, and I think France might be over there. I'm not sure. <laughs> off the path here but can't come this far without coming to the edge and having a look got to be careful that might fall away down there but you can see we are over the edge here look at that magnificent greatest defense <laughs> on this side <laughs> you got to scale that <laughs> if you wanted to invade <laughs> Taking my time now, taking this all in. Like I said at the start, I watched the film Quadrophenia back in the day. 
long time back in the day when I was a teenager. That film came out in 1979. I watched it quite a few years later and I had to see Beachy Head in the cliffs. About 15 years ago, I drove up to Beachy Head and it was pouring down with rain and I never got out. I stayed in my car and went back again. But now I'm glad I did that because there's no greater way to see the Seven Sisters and Beachy Head than to walk from Winchester to get here at the start of it. Take it all in. I'm just glad I never got out. Thank you, Mother Nature, for, for pouring down the rain and uh, Back in those days, I didn't have any waterproofs with me. <laughs> I'll tell you something, I don't know if it was Beachy Head or the young Leslie Ash that held my most attention during Quadrophenia. Of course, I was just a young teenage boy at the time. Leslie Ash just character was 17 in that so much older woman <laughs> that film was a who's who of famous British film stars <laughs> well I don't think they were at the time of course we had Sting the face we had Ray Winston we had Phil Daniels, the lead actor, as the mod. We had Nick Cotton in there as well, didn't we? Small part. Oh, and of course, how could we forget Toya Wilcox, the singer? She was in that. Phil Daniels' character couldn't see that she was besotted with him. So he went after the Leslie Ash character, so I've forgotten her name <laughs> in the film. And uh, spoiler alert, but come on, if you ain't seen that film, come on, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> the film's ambiguous ending, if that's a word. <laughs> we don't know if Phil Daniels' character went off Beachy Head on his moped, whether it's just his moped that went off Beachy Head. Of course, uh, Leslie Ash's character spurned him at the end. All his friends, the mods, spurned him at the end. He was just alone, out of his head on drugs <laughs> at the time. But you don't know whether the start is the finish or the finish is the start in that film. <laughs> Leave that to the film historians to debate. Too complicated for Snow Matrix. <laughs> Slightly off the path. See, down there is the official path, but I'm close to the edge. It has to be done. Up there is Flagstaff Point. There's the way ahead sisters I think they've all got a name it's in the guidebook but I can't name them all now on the video look them up if you want I'm too in the moment yeah <laughs> fantastic apparently today is the hardest section of the walk but uh, I don't know for, for me this is like a walk in the park very easy walking up and down these sisters but of course if your fitness level is not up to it then I suppose it could be a bit taxing but get outside <laughs> walk best exercise you can do Like I said before, I think 
this is the most spectacular ending to any trail in Britain. I know there's the lighthouse at the end of the Cape Raft Trail, but really that's all about the journey to get to that lighthouse. <laughs> I can't think of any other trail that has a finish like this. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments what you consider to be the greatest ending of any trail. But for me, of all the ones I've done, this has to be it. But there's even a lighthouse over there. I think that's the Berlin Gap, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong. We'll see. As you can see, the official path is over there. That man is walking down. No, he likes to live on the edge. <laughs> How could I come to the Seven Sisters and not put some respect on their names? <laughs> hey, I'm at Went Hill. Here are the sisters named for us. Haven Brow, Short Brow, Rough Brow, Brass Point. Flagstaff, Flat Hill, Bailey's Hill, Went Hill and Berlin Gap and that's the Bell Trout Lighthouse. Fantastic. So we have a lady over there with ridiculous blue covered hair saying that these black birds here wherever they are are horrible. Well, I think you need to look in the mirror there. <laughs> Imposing cliffs here on this single beach. Smell of the sea. I don't know. I've seen many or quite a few South Downs Way videos. No one comes to the sea. How can you not come to the sea? What's the hurry? <laughs> Oh, absolutely freezing in there. I won't be going in. This isn't a coast to coast. Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> hey, that was Berlin Gap, five miles away from Eastbourne. I've just had the most overpriced Cornish pasty and a cappuccino in Britain now. Very much a tourist trap. <laughs> but uh, what can you do? It's nice and hot food. <laughs> There's a lighthouse up there. Coming up to beach your head. The Downs, final defences. Closing in on our ultimate destination. Look, there's another lighthouse down there as well. There's a guy on a longboard there. Oh, he's not very good. <laughs> he's off it already. <laughs>
110,000 air crew that set out to liberate Europe, defend Britain from the enemy. I'll end my videos here. This is the spiritual end of the South Downs Way. I'll go down there towards Eastbourne where the end park is, but this is the finish for me. Watch my videos. I'd like to say thank you very much for watching and as always see you out there and on YouTube. Peace.